Hi everybody, welcome to Christopia Studios. I'm Kristen and Christopia is my utopia, the place I go in my head to be happy. It's my little happy place. Um, today, I'm going to attempt once again to do a couple of flip and drags. If you've seen my previous video, you'll know my first attempt at this kind of acrylic pour was a failure in that I didn't succeed in making a dragon shape, but I was able to save the painting and create a birch forest in the mountains, so it was a happy accident. The first attempt I'm making today is gonna be on a smaller cardboard canvas. I had a few, and they're cheaper than wrap canvases, and since my abject failure of the time before, I figured I'd use one of these up to attempt again. You might be wondering why I'm voicing over this. Well, last year, Due to an underlying illness, I got pneumonia three times, along with an abscess on my lung. I'm healthy now, very healthy. I'm back in my singing voice, but I'm taking no chances. So when I'm using chemicals like Floetrol or thinners or silicone, I tend to wear a respirator. Um, and when I do wear a respirator, unfortunately that makes me sound very muffled and kind of a, like Darth Vader when I breathe in. Um, I didn't want to subject you to that. So anyway, I put the cardboard on a lunch tray so that it would make less mess on my bottom surface. And I put white down as a base so the paint will flow better. For this one, I plan to use mostly blues, but there's a little bit of gold and a little bit of orangey red in there as well. Um, I am using one drop of OGX Coconut Hair Serum in my paint colors. Uh, only a tiny little drop is all you need and OGX is a safer serum for me Plus it smells better and it does work well on your hair um, You can get it at Walmart Walgreens drugstores of all kinds So I'm gonna fill up this little tiny polo cup with my um, With my colors. I put a little white down first. So that would be the last color out and I uh, plan to use mostly blues though in this particular one, but my attempt is going to be to do what some of these other painters do, which is flip the cup really fast down onto the canvas. So um, I'm finding out I'm not fast enough for that. <laughs> so this is probably not going to be a technique I'm going to try again in the future. I might do some kind of flip cup, but it's not going to be me using my own speed to flip the cup over onto the canvas. It's going to, um, that's going to change. Not going to do that. I know that um, several people do and do it well. I do not, as you can see right now. I'm going around on this canvas trying to make that shape I've been trying to make forever, that dragony shape, and it's just not working. So I'm going to use my palette knife to spread it around a little bit and see if I can salvage the shape. But honestly, there's still a little too much paint on my canvas for that. So I'm just going to um, move it around and move it out just like I did um, with the mountain scene. Only this time, I am not happy with the end result here. And since it's the cheap cardboard canvas, I'm not really gonna worry too much about trying to salvage it or paint something over the top. This canvas ends up warping as it dries. And I know you can spritz the back and you can flatten it with a book and blah, blah, blah in order to get it flat again. But I don't have that kind of time, especially not for something I don't intend to uh, sell in the future be, or give away as a gift because I just don't like it. So I'm just gonna keep that as a reminder that sometimes failures are just failures. <laughs> And um, I'm going to now try again, only I'm going to use a 10 by 20 wrapped canvas, 10 inch by 20 inch. And I'm going to work from the same colors because I have extra colors. But since this canvas is bigger, I'm going to use the same size cup in order to not have too much paint on the canvas when I finish. I am still going to try to do a flip and drag, but this time I'm going to put the cup on uh, or I'm going to turn the canvas over onto the cup and then flip them back over kind of like if I were turning out an upside down cake you know you just flip it over and then um, try again so that's what I'm going to do this time I'm still layering the same colors um, 
not sure I cho why I chose that color schematic, but it seems to work okay. But I'm just layering those same colors and I'm going to flip the canvas over on top of the cup and then flip it back. And then once I do that, that's what I'm doing here. Once I've done that, then I'm going to squirt the white onto the canvas around that cup. Um, that way I might get a truer slide. You know, I'm using my hand because it's gloved, might as well, to spread the paint around and make sure there's enough paint there. And since I'm at the bottom of my white in that container, I'm gonna go ahead and squirt the rest of it out there too to make sure I have enough white to slide the cup around on. Um, this one, at least the colors didn't spill out all at once like they did before. However, as I'm slowly lifting that cup to move it around onto the canvas, there's no controlling how much color comes out. So once again, a whole lot of color came out at the very beginning of that slide, but not at the end. But Easy peasy, jelly beasy. I used my little palette knife to, to move it around. As long as I don't overdo that, the colors are gonna stay nice and, and they're gonna be okay. I also am adding a little more color and swiping it in because I didn't like how gray it looked at the other end. Um, I wonder though if you guys can see what I'm seeing already in this pour. It's not a dragon I'm seeing, it's something entirely different. So I'm gonna get my handy dandy little tiniest blower in the world. I don't know if it is, that's what they call it, but it's really cute and it's really fun to use. It is a USB um, thing, so I just plug it into my USB phone battery that I have an extra battery of when I'm traveling and go. Um, it's not too easy to control, so I'm being very careful not to um, directly uh, aim it at the paint. I'm kind of holding it sideways. And then I'm going to put that away and use a regular straw to be more controlled in, in what else I want to blow out. I just want the edges to look lacy and not solid. Um, so I'm getting ready to blow that out because I want this, I like a lot of movement in my paintings. I don't like them to look static and still. I like them to look like they're actually moving and doing things. And in this particular case, what I'm seeing in this picture needs to move. So instead of a dragon, I saw a saxophone and it's my husband's fault because he said, oh, that looks like a saxophone. Is that what you're painting? And now I couldn't unsee it. So this is the end result. I don't know why it ended so quickly there. Sorry about that. But I just added the mouthpiece of the saxophone and threw in some keys that looked fun and art, a little art deco kind of, um, and it turned into a saxophone. And then I did a little bit of splatter painting over the top just to finish it out. So this saxophone for a while hung in a local bar because they have a lot of music going on at night. And so it was kind of fun to hang there for a month. Um, and then I, I showed it in a few shows. I put it in a few shows, but I ended up selling it to a lady at one of my art shows who had never bought a musical instrument painting before, but she said, this one speaks to me. It's so awesome. But anyway, that's kind of what happened with, with my flipping drags. I see what I see and I paint over what, I, what I've what i seen and then there it goes. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Sorry for the abrupt ending. We're working on camera issues and stability. Um, hope to see you next time. Have a great day.